Hey guys, so I'm back with my sister actually, and we are going to be attempting to do the inflating balloon. So, so we're gonna need half a cup of vinegar. Then we are going to get the balloon. And my sister is going to pour the baking soda into the balloon. So now we're just going to cover the top of the water bottle and my sister is going to lift up the balloon. And there you go, it's inflating. So we're just going to see what's going to happen. Maybe I just need to shake it a little bit more. see the balloon still worked it didn't get bigger even though we added more baking soda and less vinegar but it looks pretty cool what do you think you like the experiment oh another thing we noticed is that if you actually throw it it's it's less flowy it's more like a bouncy ball rather than a balloon Thank you so much, and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye. Should be recording now? Recording now? Yeah. It will, I think it'll tell you at the top. I think the little camera turns red. So I went to Cal State Long Beach for my undergrad and then National University for my master's degree and graduate school. So the transition was a little bit tough. Um, one thing I learned a lot when I, I went to college was that uh, you don't necessarily have the same support system you have in high school. So in high school, you have a lot of people who are working with you um, to make you successful. And in college, you uh, kind of have to seek that out and find that on your own, um, which is why it's really important, I feel like, in high school to build those skills before. And I already had those skills. Uh, I was an avid student, yeah. um, but it's definitely, a, it could be tough to transition that way. My overall experience was really good. Um, I wish I would have gotten more involved. I feel like if I would have gotten more involved in clubs or intramural sports or some other organizations, that obviously would have helped uh, and given me more of a support system. I did work on campus, so I worked at the bookstore. Uh, so I got close with some other people that attended the school. Um, I also made sure to use some of the uh, facilities like the gym, we had a bowling alley and those types of things. But I feel like if I were to give some kind of advice for that, it would be to get more involved yeah. on campus and join some clubs. So I majored in anthropology. Um, I was between a couple majors. I did change my major a couple times. I was actually a criminal justice major for two years. Um, and I, I really enjoyed it, but I just realized it wasn't for me. But I was still between uh, what I wanted to do. I, I wanted to work for either, you know, like the, the FBI or the CIA and, and doing investigative type stuff. But I also really liked working with students. And I actually worked here at Heritage my senior year of college as an avid oh, tutor. Yeah. Um, and I really loved that. So uh, anthropology was one thing that I found interesting that could have been applied to a position, you know, uh, in, in a government agency. But also, you know, if I wanted to teach, it wouldn't be a hindrance for that. Um, so I kind of just went with something that I found extremely interesting um, and, and went with that. I think the biggest piece of advice I can give you um, is to be resilient. I think um, you're going to find that when you get to, to college or, you know, if you, regardless of what you do, if you go to a trade or you go to a job, um, you have to be extremely resilient because there are going to be times when you fail and you don't yeah. do very well um, and that's just kind of something you have to live or learn to live with and then learn from and move forward and that was one of the hardest things for me as somebody who did really well in high school and high school kind of was a little bit easier for me when I got to college uh, it was my first time really struggling at something so I think persevering being really resilient and knowing that like if you just keep working at it you know that time will pass
Hello, my name is Trey Manry, and today I will be talking about the eyelash leaf-tailed gecko, or more commonly known as the satanic leaf-tailed gecko. The first thing you automatically notice when you see the satanic leaf-tailed gecko is it is an absolute master at camouflage. You can tell it has spent hundreds of years evolving the fact that it looks completely like a dead leaf. It has the tail that looks like a dead leaf, obviously, but more importantly, it body, its body looks like a leaf. You can tell that the eyes, the head, is, it has a flattened shape on the head, and it's completely so it can hug on a tree and look like a, a dead leaf. These lizards are nocturnal, which means they hunt at the night. So during the daytime, they really, really need that camouflage because they try to sleep or they're very groggy, like they don't move around a lot, obviously. But they, surprisingly, they live in Madagascar. And Madagascar is known for having its very well adapted wildlife and obviously this lizard is no exception. But surprisingly, we really don't know what hunts this thing. There, you could argue birds, obviously, but birds really don't hunt it. So we think it is a species that is extinct now that used to hunt them. And surprisingly, they're an endangered species. And that's all due to just humans. Humans think they're really, really cute pets. I mean, they are cute, but they're, they were never endangered until we made them endangered because we thought they were cute and we tried to make them pets. They used to be a thriving environment and now they're almost to extinction. Another reason we think they're going extinct is because they're running out of food. Um, they live in Madagascar, which is surprisingly cold because of the altitude, but it's very humid there. It's very sticky. And that's normally amazing environments for bugs to live in, like crickets, spiders, flies, even some snails. And that's what they primarily eat while in captivity, but we honestly don't know what they eat out in the wild because they, they can't really. They're horrible, horrible hunters. Um, they're nocturnal, which means they should be able to see good at night, but they're kind of iffy on it, honestly. And um, their teeth aren't anywhere near significant. Their bite force, it's not even enough to crack an exoskeleton of a cricket. So all they really have going for them is their ambush because a bug obviously doesn't have the most complex eyes to see something with as intricate camouflage as they have. The final thing I would like to talk about is you see how their tail is such a big part of their life. It's called the leaf-tailed gecko. It is their primary distraction when it comes to being a predator. But just about that is they have an ability that a lot of other lizards have, which is called dropping your tail. They have these hmm, connections between their bones in their tail, between the segments of their spinal columns, only in their tail. And it kind of looks like a hand. It looks like a hand, but widened out. It's like a star shape, and this is their bone interlock. And when they need to, say a bird swoops down, grabs its tail, and its only mean of escape is to detach its tail. And it can do that by uh, contracting the mus muscles so hard in their tail that the bone fragments just kind of flatten and crack out together. So the lizard can escape and their tail will be there wiggling as a distraction and obviously the lizard gets to leave live another day but it looks really gross what's up patriots i'm your host debbie yeager and today i'm coming at you guys with a super calm fitness regimen like i said today we're going to be taking it slow and we're going to be doing some yoga okay now i'm not really that familiar with yoga because you know i'm more of a like a Honestly, I'm more of a cardio type of guy. Yeah. But, you know, today I, I'm really trying for you guys and we're going to be coming at you guys with some yoga workouts, okay? So let's get straight into it. Oh, before I forget, guys, um, let me tell you guys, 
why yoga is actually important. Yoga really helps the body to just calm down and relieve some stress. Yoga is really known for helping you get flexible, but it can actually help you get stronger too. Um, it also helps you with your breathing and um, it helps you get more energy. Well, without further ado, let's get into it. The first workout is going to be the head to knee forward bend. Give me one sec, guys. I need to look at the pose. Like I said, I'm not familiar with yoga. So it looks like for this one, we're going to be just having one leg really tucked in, touching the other leg, and the other leg extended. Now the goal here really is to just put your head down on your extended leg and wrap those arms around your foot. Um, this one takes a lot of flexibility, so if you can't do it, don't hurt yourself. But really try to just get this pose down. The next exercise, I think this one's called the garland pose. Excuse me, yoga experts, if I'm wrong. For this one, it's kind of like a squat, and we're really just ducking down that head in front of our legs. Uh, you want your arms to be kind of relaxed behind your body too, and it's gonna look something like me. You can just watch me real quick. Okay, and the last pose that I have for you guys for today is the extended triangle pose. This one's pretty simple compared to the other one. Um, you just wanna have both of your legs stretched out and then you're just going to want to put one arm to the sky and one pointed towards the floor. Just go ahead and copy my movements, please, until you feel that good stretch, you know? So, guys, we're going to be doing all of these stretches for, I would say, about 30 seconds. But, you know, you really have to feel your own body and see what you're working with. Um, you know, everybody's different. But once you really start feeling the pose, you know, you get that peaceful mindset you know you can really start to just feel when you need to switch poses okay so that's it for this episode of your super calm workout regimen and i'll see you guys later good day patriots welcome to another crafting project i'm your host corazon hernandez today you will be making a lovely little snow globe what you will be needing for today is a jar preferably glass but for today i only have plastic along with baby oil glitter for the snow, a small statue or toy, as well as some super glue, but for today I only had hot glue. The figure can be a small toy or like what I am using, a small ceramic statue. If you paint your figurine, all you will be really needing is red, yellow, and blue paint, along with some Mod Podge to seal in the paint. You can also use clear nail polish, but it might take longer to paint over. I will start off by painting the figurine and sealing with a layer of Mod Podge. Once it is dry, attach the figure to the lid of the jar. I added a small block at the bottom so I can see the toy clearly. Add glitter and the baby oil in the jar leaving a little room so it won't overflow when you put the figurine in. Finally, add some glue to the inside of the lid and screw the lid tightly. And there you have an adorable little snow globe. I hope you all enjoyed this craft. Have a wonderful winter break.